Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. And today, we're going to take a look at one of the larger new Harry Potter sets. That's set number 76403, the Ministry of Magic. With 990 pieces, this set retails for $99.99 USD, or $100 and has an incredibly impressive number of minifigures, most of which, actually pretty much, oh no, all of which are exclusive except for the Dementor, and most of the characters are exclusive to this set too. This is probably one of the greatest Harry Potter sets of this wave, and also the first time we've ever gotten the Ministry of Magic, and basically everything about this set just blows me away. Albert Runcorn is a completely exclusive character, as in he's never appeared in Lego form before, so it's absolutely amazing to see him here. The minifigure is incredibly detailed, featuring light printing, which is honestly quite a rarity for Harry Potter figures, and especially this set. Although the light printing is not exclusive, it's nice to see the coattails piece return nonetheless. The hair piece is just the Black Widow's peak hair, where this character excels is the facial and torso prints. The torso print is a very nice black jacket with a ton of really good seam, pocket, and button detailing. It also features a very nice M wizard pin there, a magic pin on the collar, which is really, really cool to see. And the red tie is a very needed splash of color to bring this figure together. I love the facial print there with the beard stubble and the cheekbones. He looks very accurate to the movie, very serious. And on the back, he has some decent printing. It just continues the button and seam designs. Pulling off the hair piece, you can actually see Harry Potter's face. This is, of course, due to the Polyjuice Potion, and an alternate hair piece is included for Harry. His facial expression is also exclusive, and it looks a little childish, considering this is supposed to be the seventh book, but he's still a really great figure nonetheless, and I love that. His accessory is just going to be Harry's basic wand. Mafalda Hopperkirk? Hopkirk? Is this witch's name? And I'll be honest, I really did not know that before recording. I remember Mafalda, but did not know her last name. She used Hermione's uh, colored wand there, along with a plain black suitcase as her accessory. There's nothing inside of it, it's completely empty. Her hair piece is very basic, and so are her legs, unprinted, which is a shame, but to be expected. However, her torso print is absolutely magnificent. I love the striped design for the dress shirt there. Really, really great, especially for customs. Her facial expression is suitably very worried and kind of scared because she's working in the ministry. She's got some very nice cheekbone designs. On the back of the figure, she has some very great stripes there, and removing her hairpiece does show her alternate facial expression. That, of course, being for Hermione when the Polyjuice Potion wears off, an alternate hairpiece is, of course, included, and her facial print, like Harry's, is exclusive and looks amazing. Reg Catterball is the third character to have the uh, alternate facial expression with a different character on the back. We'll show you that in a second. His minifigure is incredibly cute and features a very great Easter egg, that being how the top of his torso is done in dark gray there to show that he was trying to clear up rain in Yaxley's office. Really great detail. Love that. His facial expression is very confused and simple, which makes sense. He's got a really great hair piece there. No printing on the arms or legs, which is to be expected. However, the torso print features another one of those M symbols over the pocket and a very great tie design. On the back, you can see the kind of Rhett Rain Spotter design does continue, and pulling off his hairpiece, you get Ron. I believe Ron's face for this set is new, although it's literally just a slightly crisper version of the one that came in previous sets, that being the hospital wing, so it's not the most interesting, and it's really nice to have an alternate hairpiece included for him as well. The next minifigure is Magic Stealing Scum, I mean, excuse me, Mary Cattermole. Uh, she is the wi uh, witch that was on trial for stealing magic for being a Muggleborn, which was ridiculous in my opinion. She is no accessories, however, is the only other character in the set to have light printing, which is really great to see. Continues on from her dress on the torso, which is really, really cool. Love the speckle designs in her coattails piece, or not coattails, just like coat printing on the jacket. Really cool in that blue design. Her plain black hair piece can be removed to show the facial print on this side, which is repeated on the other side, just slightly more scared and she does some very nice back printing. A very simple and basic minifigure, but a, ne a necessary one to recreate some key scenes from this movie. I believe this is the third time that Arthur Weasley has ever appeared in the Harry Potter range, just ever. His only other appearances being in the Burrow sets, so it's really great to see him here. And he looks relatively great. A very interesting choice for a facial expression. He looks kind of goofy in my opinion, but he does have a brand new torso print for like a business suit, which is really cool to see. Some great stripes there, and he has the traditional Weasley hair piece as well. He uses the Newt Scamander colored wand, and on the back he does have an alternate facial expression, one that looks slightly better for him, along with some really great stripe printing with wrinkle lines in the back. His brown suitcase does actually have another print inside of it. Uh, returning from the Winnie the Pooh set, wow, of course it's backwards, we have a little printed one by one with a B on it. Not sure why Arthur Weasley would have a B in his suitcase, but he does. Dolores Umbridge, everyone's least favorite, favorite character, and she looks great here, although this is certainly the worst of the three new versions of this minifigure that we've seen. She does, however, have a very nice, amazing exclusive print for Slytherin's Locket. I love this. It would have maybe been better if it was printed on a, like, metal piece you could wear around the neck, but just getting any representation of this at all is so cool and long, long overdue. 
Her hair piece remains unchanged. It looks very nice and I mean, suits her very well. But her facial print perfectly captures her essence there, like the toad face and everything. Really great torso printing for the cat hanging around her neck. Unfortunately, there's no leg printing there. And she does have an alternate facial expression one where she's yelling, kind of shocked. And she also has a Patronus included in the set. That of course is her cat. And it's the exact same translucent color and design we saw for the other Patronus animals included in the requirement. This character is great and I'm really glad they have it included. Uh, the rest of her torso printing on the backs, relatively plain. She's a great looking mini figure and has probably the best accessory in the set, all things considered. Pius Thickneys is the new Minister for Magic and the puppet completely controlled by He Who Must Not Be Named. And the minifigure here looks pretty great. Uh, he's a great character and it's weird that we haven't gotten him before considering his prominent role in the books. We're still missing Rufus Scringemore and then we'll have all the Ministers of Magic, so fingers crossed we get him next year. This character features a very plain and very nice torso print, also having the Magic M pin on his tie. He has a very nice printed suit, the under the vest underneath is the exact same design as the outer kind, and he has a really cool hairpiece, uh, Sally's redone there in this brown color. Pulling that off, you can see he's actually got some very detailed back printing, uh, the buttons kind of holding the back of his suit in place, and I love that goofy, kind of just silly, happy face on the back there. Really great goatee design, although of course, the front facial print is probably the more accurate one. He has a black wand, and the most confusing accessory in the set, here we have a suitcase that has the time turner print in it. Now, I don't know why this character would have a time turner, considering at this point in the Harry Potter universe, all of the time turners were somehow inexplicably destroyed, despite, of course, them popping up in future books. But at this point, no one is allowed to have time turners. It's a cool little nod there, and it's great to get that accessory in more sets, but it just doesn't really make much sense. Did anyone else know that Yaxley's la uh, first name was, was Corbin? I just thought his name was Yaxley. And anyway, here's Corbin Yaxley, and this minifigure is so cool. Love getting more Death Eaters, especially prominent ones such as he. He's got a really great hairpiece, that being a very cool ponytail design in tan. He's got a very nice upset angry face on this side, the black wand design, and a really great, like, evil-looking vest. I mean, you can tell. There's a little skull fastener on the bottom. How, how more evil can you get? The magic pin makes you return with him on his tie, no leg printing, and then pulling him around, he does have the exact same kind of back design that P.S. Thickney's had, although there's no alternate facial expression, which is a little unfortunate. This is the only character in the set to not have one. He's still really great though and a really welcome addition to the set. The final and only non-exclusive character in the set is going to be the Dementor. This guy's appeared several times before, however, he's got a new soul-sucking accessory, but it doesn't quite make sense because that should come from his mouth, not from his hand, but it's okay. I wish they had re redone this minifigure to have the new Star Wars hood design instead of the original one. It would look a lot better in my opinion. That being said, the figure is still great, and underneath the hood, you can see a truly terrifying facial expression there, where it's just the soul-sucking, like, orb design. And then there's a cape on the figure, which pulling that up, you can see there's no background printing, which is to be expected. I mean, you're never really going to take the cape off. It's a welcome addition to get this Dementor here because you always need more for your Dementor army. Additionally, we have a few side builds included in the set. There are four of them. Woo, two of them are just these very, very simple designs for the flying hyper airplanes. It's a shame they're not more airplane like or they don't have any printing or like detailing on them. Would have been nice to get like a little sticker with some black lines or something, but it's really cool that they're here because they're just like a very interesting part of the Ministry of Magic and very representative of something we actually saw in the movie. The other two side builds are much, much better. That, of course, being the fountain and the telephone box to travel into the ministry. Here we have a wonderful gold minifigure, and he's holding a little gold coin along with a wand. He's got some very nice gold frogs supporting him on some more gold leaf pieces, and just a very nice base with netherite ingots supporting it. The fountain is very plain and definitely could have been done a lot better. However, a couple of the iterations would have required a lot more gold minifigures than LEGO's willing to shill out for, and also would have been a lot darker and more violent than LEGO is capable of doing. But this, this representation of it is incredibly great and definitely works for what we need. And it's also, I mean, hey, there's nothing else to compare it to, so it's the best we ever got. The telephone box, on the other hand, is much, much nicer. Red all the way around with the telephone sticker on all four sides, which is wonderful. We have a very nice door piece here that I think, honestly, probably appeared in Diagon Alley too. if I'm being honest with you. Opening this up, you can, wow, break off the doorknob, Dan. Way to go. Opening this up, you can actually fit a minifigure inside. Uh, let's take Harry Potter, for instance. Now, you're going to be hard-pressed to fit more than one character in there, which is unfortunate and slightly inaccurate. However, I mean, it is what we got. There's no studs in there, so the minifigure just kind of rests there, and there's a single phone on the back there. No dial pad, sticker for keyboard, or anything like that, just a phone, which is a bit unfortunate and inaccurate, but this is still a really cool build. And also, it could be used to, like, integrate into a LEGO City if you have one. Pop this in there, and it will look perfectly. Although, of course, I got a blue one from a different set that's way better. 
Altogether, this set looks amazing from the exterior. The exterior of all the modules looks phenomenal. We're going to take a closer in-depth look at all of them, but I first wanted to show you how the set out looks from the behind when the entirety of the model is still together. Now, it's a little difficult to see everything due to how it's angled from the back. However, you can see all two of the rooms on each side. Unfortunately, only four of the modules have an interior. The other two are mainly play feature based, but that's totally okay. All four of the modules we do get decorated are incredibly well done. And also the really cool part about this set is surprisingly it's actually modular all of the sections do come apart you can see the technicals here for how you can recombine it uh the first thing that comes apart is actually this bridge at the top you can pull that off and that's just this section we'll look at that later and then if you wanted to you could actually completely stick both halves of this together uh so if you wanted like one complete version of the ministry you could do that and then each of these individual sections all come apart as well the roofs also come apart as well so that's really really cool the first two sections aren't the most interesting of models, however, they do both have really great architecture and built-in play features, which is phenomenal. Now, the first one is actually going to be the disapparating fireplace area, and there is a fun play feature there where you can insert one minifigure, and then grabbing a lever on the back, boom! They apparated away and they teleported. That's really, really cool. How that works is you simply grab this lever from the back and just pull this down. The character slides off the back and you close it up. There's nothing in the back here. It's just a bunch of plates and everything. On the front, there are some really nice crowbars used as gold decoration. Love the green fire pieces and the candles and the gold leaf designs. It's a very, very nice ex ex like exterior here with the green and everything. Would have maybe preferred if they integrated a little bit of red because the rest of the buildings have red and it feels a little bit out of place. That play feature is very fun though and works every time. Over on the other side of the module, hey, you were supposed to disapparate. What are you doing back there? The other module is a little more plain. It's got a very nice, like, smokestack design going on with some really cool translucent pieces there for lights. They also have four different stacks of newspapers here. And the whole point of this play feature is they're supposed to launch out and kind of fly apart like they do in the movie. And each of those prints are exactly the same. It says undesirable number one, Harry Potter, with a picture of him there. Really, really great print. Super accurate and super fun. And because these are all attached on just one stud, they're really easy to just launch off and all the stacks do fall. These two are completely stationary and do do not fall off, although, of course, you can remove them if you want to have them be carried around or move somewhere else. That's quite fun. Uh, aside from that, there's not too much else to either of these sections. From the back, you can see it's the exact same, like, diamond feature that the other module has. It's just, you know, very plain, very stationary. They're nice, and they work well to kind of add play features to the set, but ultimately, they don't do too much. I figure we can start with the least interesting model here and then move on to the most interesting, and that's not saying much considering that all of these are phenomenal. Now, the exteriors for every single one of these, bar one, are now going to be exactly the same. Uh, we have a very nice, like, tri-window pattern here where it's curved outwards, a really great use of candle pieces to fill in the gaps here, but in red, and you have some really nice gold detailing on the bottoms and the top here in the leaf form, which is really great. There are four studs on top that allows you to actually connect a second module onto the top if you wish and just attach on those four studs so it can be easily removed, but it also has a very sturdy attachment, so it's not really going to fall. All the modules come with Technic pin holes on each side, so you can connect them together as you wish. Now, the interior of this one is rather basic. This is Umbridge's, like, interrogation desk, and it can be very easily removed, so you can play with it elsewhere. The entire desk sits on four studs, just can be pulled out. There's a single chair in the back there where you can see Umbridge, a quill, and then a very nice uh, stickered element here. It's supposed to be like she's writing down names during the court cases in and everything. Unfortunately, it's all lines, so nothing you can actually read there, and that sticker is repeated on this stack of paper over here as well. There's a secondary chair there for um, Mary Catchpole to sit when she's being interrogated, which is pretty great. Aside from that, the interior here is rather empty. It's great to get this, though, because that's an incredibly iconic scene from the Deathly Hollows recreated here. While it's a little plain, it's super important that we do get that. This module is the one I mentioned being slightly unique, and that's because the exterior here has some of those Stranger Things newspaper prints on it, and those are just to kind of show this one's a little more run down, a little more damaged. There are four of those and two open windows still. Aside from that, the rest of the exterior is basically the same. There's uh, black pieces here instead of green, though, to separate it a little bit, but you still have the gold leaf designs, the candle pieces, and the masonry bricks at the top. Now, the interior of this is actually the Hall of Prophecies. While it's not accurate to this location, it is really cool to still get a representation for this building and also you get a ton of beautifully translucent elements there the cloudy ones there's also a like glowing blue flame inside of a case over there and the play feature here is you can take this and knock over the hall of prophecy all the shelves come tumbling down because Ginny cast the reducto curse 
not quite from this particular movie, but it's still nice to see that play feature implemented because it's the only time we've actually seen this scene in the movies. This is really cool to get, and I really love how there's just little bits of glowing prophecy strewn everywhere. It's a fun play feature, works really well, although this lever does move on its own, so if it's like that, the thing won't fall. So I guess if you wanted to lock this in place, you can do that. Otherwise, you'd have to put that back up and then knock it down again. This looks great, and again, it has the same technic holes and the four studs at the top. Arthur Weasley's office is amazing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe we ever actually see this in the movies. This one is based just off of the description of this in the books, which is really, really cool. That rarely happens. We have a truly phenomenal sticker here for the Weasley family on their vacation to Egypt. There's a rubber duck and a glass display case on top of a stack of two by twos there. There's no printing on them. They're just plates. There's a singular chair there for Arthur to sit on, a cup, a baby bottle, another cup, a teapot. We also have a fork and then a boom box, a gem, a little potions bottle, a clock and then a picture of an aeroplane his greatest ambition is to find out how aeroplanes stay up which is so fun love that little detail and those are stickers not prints by the way and this is just so cute and fun it's a really great cluttered office area exactly how i picture this from the books and it's so cool they actually decided to do this instead of doing a different location come to think of it i'm not really sure what else they would have done besides this so it's really cool to see you've got the exact same decorations on the top the exterior is the exact same as the interrogation room there's no changes there and of course you have the technic holes this is one of the best modules in the set. While Arthur's office is incredible, it really cannot beat Dolores Umbridge's office. This thing is incredible, and the urge to transplant this into like a Hogwarts castle module to make her actual Hogwarts office is very strong. I love this. The pink is incredible. The cat portraits are wonderful. I love like the bows up top. You get some really great stickers for cats there. I just love all of them. On the desk, there's actually another sticker here. That's for, it just says MMM. I think this is uh, the Mad-Eye Moody's character sheet. I know because in the, her office, she had like little profiles for all of the different members of the Order of the Phoenix. Believe that's Mad-Eye Moody's. That's why it's MM. Aside from that, her office is relatively plain. Pulling away her chair, you can see the desk design in gold there. There's a teacup on there, which makes a lot of sense. Would have been really cool to see them implement maybe her black quill that kind of hurt Harry's hand. Although that might be a little dark to add for a Lego set. Although, of course, this is based off of the Deathly Hollows, so... Kind of already went a little dark there. Great build here, incredibly impressive. And like I said before, the exterior is the exact same as all the other ones. No changes there. The roof section for this build is incredibly impressive and contains quite a lot of Easter eggs, for being honest. We have some of the, I believe they're called decoy detectors. Or I think this is what Harry threw that multiplied and distracted all of the workers so he could sneak into Umbridge's office initially. You get two of those included on the roof here, which are really, really nice. You also have some very nice green smoke powder here. Maybe it's coming from them, maybe from something else. I don't have that piece in my collection. I believe it originated with Monkey Kid, so it's really cool to see it branch off into here. The motifs of the green of the gold leaf, excuse me, and the green light roof design are repeated from the other sets and you have the red design up here to kind of tie this in the fact that it is actually a roof to the modules we saw earlier which is cool you also have the giant wizard symbol banner there that hangs down and can like wave around would be really cool to get another sticker for that that has fudge's face so you can reenact the battle scene from the fifth movie but it's okay i wasn't really expecting that we have the magic logo again put upside down there i guess it's mad uh, upside down Oh no, I just realized I put this sticker upside down. I am incredibly upset. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, that was a harrowing experience, but I finally was able to fix that. And just peeling off the sticker and putting it back, you can see I fudged the corner there a little bit, but it looks much better now. Wow, cannot believe that's the first time I've ever messed up a sticker. That's horribly embarrassing. Anyway, there's some really great gold detailing here. I love like different flower pieces and the rail pieces. We actually have an office space up top. There's some stairs here you can have characters walk up and there's a typewriter with nothing printed on the paper being printed. There's a little lamp as well as a small chair. A really great roof design, like I said before. This is modular, so you can actually remove the angled piece if you want to. And now you have different ways to display the set, which I think is an incredibly important feature. Here's a fun example of how to switch around the designs and everything. Unfortunately, you don't have extra roof pieces there, so that spot looks a little barren. But as you can see here, you can really reconfigure this to be however you want. Multiple towers, one tower, like six towers, individual sections. It's incredibly creative, and I do really love that. 
The box for this set is absolutely amazing and it's incredibly chaotic, but in a good way. We have the entire set on display. Dolores is out there with her desk doing the trial of Mary Catchpole. You have the telephone box coming down. Arthur's apparating in. None of the papers are flying everywhere as the uh, Death Eaters try to capture Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Also, very interestingly, we have the characters on the bottom there and then ghost versions of the other forms of the uh, three big three there kind of appearing behind them with some cool potion effects above their heads, which is a really nice detail and addition touch. On the top of the box, we have all of the characters and a couple of the little mini models there displayed as well. The Dementor as well has a really cool prominent part, uh, part chasing them, which is quite cool. On the other side of the box, you're going to have an alternate rendition of the set, a different way to kind of build it all together, which is quite nice to see. Shows how modular it is. And then you have all the play features explained, how to transform the characters, just like we saw with the Polyjuice Potion set way back when, everything that comes apart, and then details for the best offices, obviously, my two favorites. Even though technically they're built differently up there than they are down there, which is a very interesting detail. The instruction menu for this set is pretty plain. All the characters are standing very, very stock still in weird positions and nothing like they were on the front of the box, which had a really great image. On the back, we have the Windman. You're gonna have a parts list here. And then you have an advertisement for how to construct Hogwarts Castle, despite this not being part of Hogwarts Castle. No chocolate frog cards included, but you do have a Rebuild the World advertisement. And then a giant explosion of stars because you finished the set. Interestingly enough, they use fake Hermione there as the travel character, which is very, very interesting choice. Aside from that, nothing else special about the instruction manual. Very simple, very basic. Overall, this set absolutely earns a solid 10 out of 10. For $100, I think the price is incredibly fair, clocking in at just about a 1,000 pieces. I mean, you get nine technically 10 minifigures if you count the statue there. And I mean, most of them are characters we've never gotten in Lego form ever before. And ones that have been incredibly highly requested, like Yaxley, like P.S. Uh, P P.O.S. Thick Thickenies, wow, can I pronounce his name? And of course, all three of the alter egos for Harry, Ron, Hermione. The build for the set is incredibly beautiful, stunning, and amazing. It's got so many iconic parts from multiple movies, and that just simply can't be beat. I would highly recommend this set. Get it as soon as you possibly can. That's all I got for you guys today. Please make sure to leave your thoughts about this set in the comment section down below. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic and safe rest of your day. I'll catch you all in the very next video.